hoping I'm live. So let's see, I'm just going to look over at my iPad, so bear with me while I make sure that everything's looking how I would hope it would look. There's always a bit of a delay. So, oh, it looks like I'm probably there. That's good. Excellent. Right, sort out the volume. I don't want to be in stereo. And I can see somebody's there already. So that's really good. So if you are watching, please let me know you're watching. It's Mary. Hi, Mary. Nice to have you. Right, let me just make sure that uh, I'm central and not too close. You don't need to see my wrinkles. Okay, I can still hear myself. I'm just going to fiddle with the volume on my iPad. Having myself on my iPad as well is the only way that I can actually see your comments and check that I'm where I should be. Right, okay. So I'm hoping it's bright enough. I haven't got my light on. Last week I had to have my special light on, um, which is extremely bright in my eyes, but does make uh, you seeing what I'm doing an awful lot better. But the sun is actually out this afternoon. It's bitterly cold though. Have you been out today? I went out earlier to um, drop something off somewhere just in Lymington and it was absolutely freezing, freezing cold. Um, and the Met Office has sent me a weather warning to say there's going to be ice tonight um, and I'm going out tomorrow early so I'm going to have to remember to be very, very careful. Um, so this is the stage at which I say to you, how are you and what have you been doing this week? So pop a comment in and tell me if you've done anything exciting this week or frankly if you've done anything this week. We're finally let out of lockdown. Um, certainly here in the New Forest we're in tier two. We should be in tier one because our cases are incredibly low but for some reason it's too difficult to subdivide Hampshire. But anyway, I'm not going to get political. This is not the place for that. But we're in tier two which means we can go out and do two thi a, a, a few things but we can't do most of the things that we want to do. But hey ho, next year will be better, won't it? Um, I, I've started getting Christmas cards and I think every single one of them says here's to a better 2021 so I think we all feel a bit that way don't we um, well three weeks till Christmas are you all ready have you finished making your cards put your hand up if you have my hands not going up either um, I'm still making Christmas cards I have started writing them um, many of you will know that I am dreadful for writing my Christmas cards. I usually wait till about the second week in December and then I have to write dozens every single night and it makes me miserable um, rather than being able to enjoy it. Uh, the problem is that I can't write them too early because I'm not in the right festive mood but I have started. Um, so my husband and I, we send about 80 personal cards I suppose and then I send about 40 or 50 for my business. Um, and he sends work ones as well. So it's a lot of cards to write and we really do need to get going on them. Uh, I can see some comments have popped up. I'm just going to have a quick look. Let me see if I can bring my iPad a bit closer so I don't have to uh, lean away from you. Oh, so who's here? Belinda's here. She says hi to everyone. Hi, Belinda. Lorraine's here. She's sitting in her conservatory wrapped in a woolen shawl to keep warm. I'm not surprised. Don't tell anyone, but I've put the heating on for an hour. It was so cold. <laughs> I was here earlier, um, I had a fleece on, I was wrapped in a blanket, I had my fingerless gloves on and I thought I'm still cold so I did put the heating on um, and it's just it's just wearing off now so uh, I've taken off my layer of fleece because I, I always get warm when I'm talking to you uh, so I, th I think I'll be fine by the time we finish. Rosie's saying that was a lot of cards, yes it was Rosie, it is. Rosie says hi to Belinda, Marjorie's here. This is lovely, lots of friends all together. I'm so sorry we're not all sitting around the table with coffee and cake, but there you go. I've got a cup of tea. Have you got a cup of tea or a mug of cocoa? Maybe you've got a sneaky slice of cake. I'll quickly tell you that I have no cake. I don't make it because I don't have you lot to help me eat it. All right, so what's anybody been doing this week? Um, I've mostly been cutting card this week. I uh, sent out my monthly card class yesterday and I've got a few people coming and picking theirs up today, people who are local. Um, so that's always a lot of cutting of cards. I love to cut card and paper, I don't mind at all. Um, I put on a video or I put on some music um, and I just get cutting. So I haven't calculated exactly how many pieces I cut for this month's class but I had 16 people take the class and there were six projects. 
and uh, I think the simplest card had five pieces so even if they all had five pieces that's about 500 pieces um, and most of them had more than that I think so um, so there we go that was a lot of cards so that's what I've been doing this week but they're all already and, and off on their way uh, which is really nice I've got two more classes to prepare and film this year uh, and my team meeting and then that's it uh, I shall try and get some preparation ready for next year done before Christmas um, and then I'm going to take a couple of weeks off a couple of weeks holiday so Marjorie's saying hi Sally hi everyone and Belinda's asking Rosie if she's okay okay Rosie you may be able to read this but Belinda's asking if you've got a date yet for part two or if you've got to wait till after Christmas I think I know the answer to that because I think I saw it the other day but I'll let Rosie reply to you Belinda <laughs> as it's her we're talking about <laughs> it'd be nice if she talks for herself rather than have me doing it for her okay so the last couple of weeks um, I've looked at watercolour pencils to use with your images and I've looked at stamping blends to use with your images so I thought just to kind of complete um, the trio then today I would look at colouring your images with ink in a variety of ways so that's what I'm going to do I've got three projects um, there's a little bit of here's one I prepared earlier because um, if you're using water on your projects you'll know that it needs to dry before you can assemble things um, so I have done a, a few bits and pieces in advance but I'll be taking you through the whole process for three projects with three different ways of colouring your images using ink ink pads um, and re-inkers so um, that's what I've got in store for you today I'm going to cover you over and um, turn the camera around but I will just tell you Rosie said it's on the 18th and she's got to isolate from the 15th I don't envy you that Rosie I mean I know we've all been isolating like mad but um, now we've got a little bit of freedom you won't have that at all um, you will have to stay put however I do happen to know you have a very lovely craft room so you could be sitting in that couldn't you uh, that hopefully will make the days pass a little bit quicker right so I am going to cover you over now move the camera um, so you don't get seasick and then I will be back with you shortly I have to try and remember to keep talking but because I'm concentrating sometimes I forget so bear with me. Let's fiddle with this. I'm fiddling with my stand. It's got a little kind of ball and socket joint on it, but it, it's a bit temperamental. Well, it's not temperamental, but it's stiff. Okay, so it's not wanting to play ball at all today. So, nearly there, I think. Uh, let's see where we are. All right. So, I may have to fiddle with this a bit more, but I can't tell until I pull the post-it note off. So, let's do that. I'll wait for my iPad to catch up, and we'll see where I am. I'm Okay, so I'm going to need to fiddle just a little bit, and I've forgotten to do the settings on this, so bear with me. Let me cover you over again, because I think it's going to move quite a lot. There we go. Pink post-it note, because pink is my favourite, and why not? There we go. I always forget something. It's not that difficult to do. A Facebook live once you know what you're doing and in theory I know what I'm doing but there's quite a lot of things to remember and I tend to always forget something so at least I didn't appear as if I was in Australia I nearly gave you the view of my garden but I remembered just in time that I needed to do the reverse camera okay so I'm sorry if this is annoying Right, I think I might be there. Let's have a look. Wait for the iPad to catch up. There we go. I'd like to be able to get this higher up, but I can't really. Um, so, um, put my hands in, make sure I'm in shot. Belinda's saying that's soon for Rosie's op, but it would be good for her to get it out of the way and fingers crossed. Yes, we've all got our fingers crossed for you, Rosie. All right, so there are lots and lots of things that you can do with your ink pads to colour in your images. Uh, the first one I'm going to show you um, 
just uses normal stamping and then it uses a spritzer. So I've got my stamp set here, which is Timeless Tulips. Um, I know it's not spring, but it will be soon. <laughs> so I thought I would break out my tulips because I haven't used them for a while. Um, I'm using some of the in colours here. I've got Magenta Madness and Just Jade. I love this colour combination. It's bright and cheerful. Um, and they're kind of very pretty versions of pink and green, I think. The images I'm going to use are the two smaller tulips and the two stems. And then I've got one of the leaves on here um, just to save time. I could have used all three leaves, but I'm just going to use the one. I've got some watercolour paper because I'm going to get my work really wet. And the card bases I'm using today are the Memories and More card bases. They're in the annual catalogue. Um, Rosie's saying that she hasn't got this stamp set, so I hope you enjoy watching me use it, Rosie. And welcome Cheryl, Cheryl Shaw. It's lovely to have you, Cheryl. Where are you, Cheryl? Which part of the world are you in? So I'm just fanning these out to show you. So you get five colours in a pack with these cards. Um, they're six by four inches folded up and they're, they're scored already for you, which is really nice. So you just pull them out and they're ready to use. So they're coloured on one side. The front has got this really nice dotty frame and then they're white inside and so these are the uh, 2020 to 2022 in colours which I just think are beautiful and then the envelopes are just as lovely see they've got this lovely spotty inside they're white on the outside and then they've got these lovely spots inside so they're super pretty so those are what I'm going to use for my card base and on the front of my cards as I say I'm going to be using the, uh, some watercolour paper. This is beautiful watercolour paper. It's 100% cotton um, and it's got a slight texture but not enough that it interferes if you want to actually stamp your images. So it's really lovely to use. So to start off with I'm just going to stamp in the normal way just exactly as if I was stamping a card on ordinary um, white, white card. This stamp I haven't mounted properly because I just wanted to show you how easy it is with photopolymer stamps to uh, alter the shape of them. So I want more of a curve on this. If I just lay that on my grid paper, that's a really straight stem, but I actually want a curve in it. So if I pop it on my block, then I can actually curve it. And because it's a sticky, clingy stamp, it will just stay in place however I want to put it. So there we go. So I've now got, this one is in, in the stamp set already curved, but I wanted a second one that was curved, but curved differently. So I've just done that myself on the block. All right, so to get back to the stamping, I'm going to start off with the stems. I've got my Just Jade ink, and I need my foam mat underneath my grid paper because these are photopolymer stamps, so they don't have any sponge on them already. So they need a little bit of give underneath. So let's start off with my stems. One there like that. And then this is my other one. And I'm just gonna add the flowers to those before I add a third stem because that will just help me know where to put everything. Rosie's saying that these card bases are a treat and the envelopes are such good quality, they're easy to miss in the catalogue. Yeah, I agree with you, Rosie. They are absolutely beautiful. So this is the, the larger of the smaller tulip heads, if that makes sense. Um, I'm just having a look at this. Yeah, I'm going to pop this one in the middle. I can't quite get my head over the top, so hopefully this is going to be in the right place. Belinda says she's got this stamp set but for some reason has struggled to get good images so she's watching intently. Well I hope I can help you Belinda. Um, I don't have any particular tricks. Sometimes um, photopolymer sets in particular don't want to stamp properly when they're brand new. So what I tend to do is just get some scrap paper and I ink and stamp and clean and ink and stamp and clean and ink and stamp and clean. So I do that repeatedly and that just gets any manufacturing residue off them. Um, other than that, I'm sure you are, but make sure you've got a foam mat underneath and make sure you've got a reasonably juicy ink pad 
Um, so hopefully that you will, you will find that you can do a little bit better with them. So I'm just bringing in a third stem there because things are always better in odd numbers. So we'll have three tulips. I've just realised I've actually stamped the wrong end of the stem. If I bring the stamp in, hopefully you can see it's got one end which is designed to have the flower on it and then it's got one end which is a sort of a cut end and I've done it the wrong way round where I stamped off the edge but I don't actually think it matters. <laughs> I can live with that. All right, so I'm not going to need my pink ink pad for a little while. Um, I am going to bring in my leaf. I'm just going to stamp a few leaves. Now these leaves will work either way up, so I tend to just turn them depending on the space I'm trying to fill. So I've done that with this way round, but I can also turn it and use it this way round, perhaps up here. And maybe we'll just see if we can squeeze one more into the middle there. There we are. So that's my stamping. I'm going to remove the foam mat because I'm not going to want that. Now I'm working on a nice even surface. And now the watercolory bit comes in. So I've got a stamping spritzer here. This has just got tap water in it. Um, I know I always say it, but these are the best deal in the catalogue. They're two pounds. I think it's two seventy-five, and you get two in a pack. They're absolutely fantastic. They have a lovely fine spray on them, and they're brilliant for this kind of work. I'm going to bring in a piece of kitchen roll just to catch the worst of the wet. In fact, I might bring in a couple of pieces, then I won't have to change my grid paper in a minute. So Belinda's saying, yes, she has a foam mat and good ink pads. Maybe she needs to have a go at cleaning them some more. Yeah, try it, Belinda. And it's not just the cleaning. For some reason, if you ink the stamp and then stamp it and then clean it and then repeat that multiple times, that seems to do a better job somehow. So I'm just going to spritz this now. And what we're doing is exploiting the fact that the ink is water-based. So all I've done is stamp and then I've spritzed it with water. And then as you watch, you can see that ink starts to run. Now, if you've ever done as I've done and managed to spill some water onto a card you've been stamping, you will know that this happens. Um, but here we're doing it intentionally. I've got a bit of a dry bit here. I'm just going to spritz just once more there. There we go. And if you think the ink running is just going a little bit mad, you can just dab it off a little bit. But what we will get is a beautiful kind of halo colour effect around. And that is quite wet. That's why I've used watercolour paper. Um, you can use shimmery white card for this as well. But I just think the watercolour paper takes this amount of water particularly well. It will flatten out as it dries. Um, and then once it's dry, you can finish your card off. So Rosie and Belinda are saying they love this. Thank you. I'm very pleased you like it. So I'm going to move that aside now and bring in one that I did earlier, which is now dry. It's slightly different arrangement of the flowers because I don't know about you, but I find it very difficult to do something identical. I'd much rather vary things a little bit, but let's put that one out of the way. So here's one I prepared earlier. I'm just going to have a slurp of my tea as well. so you can see it better. Rosie's saying the packs of watercolour are so small. The watercolour paper, Rosie. Do you mean the size of the paper or do you mean the number of sheets? I mean, they are. They aren't. They aren't huge. That is true. Um, I tend to order two at a time. <laughs> now, before I actually complete my card, I think this just needs a little something. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a little bit of spattering. So first of all, um, I'm going to get some ink into the lid of my ink pad so that I can then use that and spatter with it. So I'm going to turn this upside down and just press. What I'm doing is I'm squeezing the lid and the base towards each other. For some reason with these boxes, you may have some old ink pads, the boxes there um, are, are a different construction, but with these, if I squeeze like this, I can't move them. So I, if I turn it upside down, it seems to work better. And what I've done is I've pressed that ink pad against the inside of the lid. Uh, is that the lid? No, the inside of the base of the box. Now, if you have reinkers, you can just drop a droplet of reinker into the lid and use that. Um, or another way you can use the ink is to just get a clear block and then just press it onto the ink pad. And there you have a palette of ink that you can use as well. So I know I've got some people who can't bear using the insides of their boxes. 
I think it's just too messy, but you can certainly um, do that like this. Okay, so Rosie's saying the watercolour packs are small in terms of the number of sheets and the size of the paper. Yeah, that's true, Rosie. I think they're sized for card makers, probably. So the size is quite small. It's five by seven inches, I'm pretty sure. Um, although actually I've cut this down. This is only three by four. So this is less than half a sheet here. Um, but yes, and if there's not enough sheets, you, you've just got to order two packs at a time. I'm sorry, but that's what you need to do. Prudence is here. Prudence, hi, lovely to have you. Welcome. All right, so I'm now going to bring in my water painters, which if you were with me last week, you saw me using. But in case you weren't, these are a paintbrush tip. There's a water reservoir in here. This just unscrews like that. So the brush tip comes off. You fill this up from the tap and then just screw it back up. And then it just saves you having to have an open container of water on your desk, which is never a good idea if you are uh, a crafter like me that has a lot of stuff on their desk and is always moving things around to get at what you want. Um, so it's like a wet paintbrush. That's all it is. But you've got your water reservoir in here already. And if you want to clean it, all you do is grab a piece of kitchen paper on the barrel it says push so you just push or squeeze it there and I don't know if you can see water floods out of the tip and rinses off any color you've got you can obviously wipe off any color and then you can change color so that fantastic for that so to get back to what I was doing I said I was going to do some sputtering didn't I? I'm just going to bring back my sheets of kitchen paper here and I'm going to use that brush and dispense some water into here and make this ink a little bit looser so I can spatter it. There we go and I'm going to pick up a good bit on my brush and then I usually just tap it on my finger but you can bring in something else and tap it like that. There we go. And you can experiment with how wet your brush is, how far away you hold it. Uh, you can't see all of my desk. I have actually got pink spatters ooh, pretty much everywhere now. So, so clear your desk before you start. Um, but I do think it's, it's a fun way of adding a touch extra to your projects. So I'm just going to flush my brush now with water. Get rid of that pink because I want to put some green on there too. So if I now paint on some clean paper, perhaps a trace more ink on there, flush it with a bit more water. There, now that's clean. So that's so easy to do. Rosie's talking about the left hand thread. Thread on, yes, yeah, that is indeed true. So when you come to use these, they don't unscrew the way you expect. You turn the barrel to the right to unscrew it. Normally, that would well, that would tighten it. Rosie's husband says only plumbers use left-hand threads. <laughs> so there you go. But anyhow, all right. Now because this ink in here is so wet and loose, I'm just going to dab the worst of that off. If I hadn't diluted it so much, I would just leave it in there, and it would sit there without doing any harm, and it would be ready for next time without wasting it. But I'm now going to do exactly the same with my just jade. So pop some water into it and add a few spatters of green as well. Nothing happened at all there. <laughs> I obviously haven't got enough on my brush. That's better. There we go. So I don't want quite as much green. So I'm happy with that now. And you just keep going until, you know, you're happy with it. So I'm just mopping out the lid of my ink pad again and then I can shut that up. There we go. Clean this off. While I'm doing this, those little spatters are drying enough that I can actually assemble the card. There we go. So that brush is now clean and ready to use again. So that's my piece there. I've got my green card here. So I cut this to three inches by four inches, which fits beautifully inside that frame on there. 
I don't need any other mats or layers or anything. Oops. Can you tell this is a new container of glue? There we go. Now this paper is thick and it's absorbent so I find I do need a little bit more glue on this than perhaps I might normally and it just takes a moment longer to actually grab so I'm just going to press that there and see how I tea while I do and then it'll be ready where I squidged out far too much glue because it's a new one and I'd forgotten I've got a bit of a, a squidge there there we go a little cotton bud I use quite a lot of those all right so that's most of the work done I did tie a little bow which I think I'm going to pop on here so this is magenta madness ribbon this is the same as the ink color I used it's this lovely woven ribbon I really like this um, and I just tied a bow uh, I've got some glue dots somewhere here we go look can you see I've got green spatters all over my glue dots <laughs> I'm not a clean crafter <laughs> so Rosie's said it looks amazing and Belinda says she loves it the colors really pop out when it's backed on the card yeah I think they really do um, and I think this is an instance where you can really see how the the stamping up coordination works so well um, because the greens just tie in so nicely together. So I'm just going to pop that on the corner. And I've got some rhinestones. I can't decide if I want some rhinestones. What do you think, ladies? Do you want some rhinestones? The other thing I pulled out in case I decided to use them were the faceted gems. So I, I need some opinions here. What do you think? Do we need rhinestones or do we need faceted gems or do we just leave it plainer? And get these out of the packet I'll lay these down on there there we go so there's white ones but I thought I would probably use some of the clear ones the very small ones I've got some more of them I've only got one on this sheet they're a little bit more subtle so I'm waiting for somebody to tell me Rosie's saying no <laughs> leave it plain Mary says right okay well that's two for leave it plain thank you ladies for your help there we go leave it plain <laughs> it's great to have an opinion Belinda says prefer it without the gems right unanimous then <laughs> Rosie's saying step away from the gems and the rhinestones okay they're gone <laughs> thank you very much thank you for your advice all right so that's my card um, on my envelope I'm going to just stamp um, another stem on there so here's one of my stems bring back my just jade Oh, and I need to, there we go, I'm just going to fiddle with my thing, I just had to charge it, there we go. I had a low power come up on my phone, the last thing I want to do is to lose you all. There we go, so we'll just pull a stem in here, I've forgotten to put my foam mat underneath, haven't I? That's better. Pop a leaf in. I'm not going to do anything fancy with the water on this. I'm literally just going to stamp a tulip. There we go. Might do another leaf, actually. I think it needs another leaf. Just turn it round this time just so it looks a little bit different. There we are. So that's my envelope. And then I'm just going to stamp a little bit inside the card. I think I shall leave the card itself blank without a sentiment because it'll be useful for anything then. I'm trying to keep this in shot. There we go. I think you can hopefully see that. I may have I may have stamped the stem where you couldn't see it. Um leaf there we are 
So that is my tulip card. So just to run through very quickly, I took watercolour paper, I stamped my images on it, and then I spritzed all over the top with just a spritzer bottle filled with tap water. Um, I dabbed off any diluted ink that was just going absolutely wild, but then I just set it aside to dry. And then once it was dry, I added some spatters of ink and then I've just put it onto one of these beautiful memories and more card bases and added a bow and I have not added any rhinestones <laughs> under instruction. <laughs> so that's that card. Rosie says I'm an enabler. She needs that set now and it's my fault. <laughs> I'd just like to show you possibilities, Rosie, that's all. So I'll leave the card there for you while I just clean the stamps before I move them out of the way. Have you ever done that thing where you've got inky stamps on your desk and then you lean across and suddenly you've stamped your clothing? Yeah, I've done that loads of times. So I am going to stamp these very, uh, not stamp them, clean them very quickly. And then I'll show you something else. Oh, I've got a bucket here I'm just going to drop everything into. By the time I've finished, I know what my craft room is going to look like and it's not going to be pretty, but never mind, it'll be worth it. I'll put some photographs of these cards here um, once we've finished so you'll be able to actually have a really good look at them then. Right, let's remove that one. Remove the foam mat. And then I'm going to bring in a stamp set I actually used last week. This has got the bunny on it. So if you were here last week, you may recognise that. So this is Nature's Beauty. It's a lovely stamp set. Um, I love all the animals. I like these wintry trees and bushes as well. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to exploit again the fact that the water that the ink is water based but do something a little bit different with it and something that's a little bit more controlled. I know um, that the kind of the wild spritz it and see what happens doesn't work for absolutely everybody although it's one of my favorite things to do. I love to be surprised by by what I make. Um, but this is a bit more controlled. So my card base, this time I'm using this one in um, cinnamon cider. So I've got that ready. And you could use watercolour paper for this, which would be lovely. But this time I've brought in some shimmery white card. Now, mm, I don't think the shimmer is going to be picked up on that. And I'm wondering, actually, if I need to put my light on as well. Let me put the light on and we'll see if that makes a bit of difference. Because I'm getting a little bit of shadowing now. The sun has moved around. Let's see if that's better. Okay, I'll take a minute just to catch up. Let's wait and see. Oh, I'm watching my iPad. Okay, I'm going to just turn off the overhead light and see if we've got enough light without it because I'm getting this kind of shimmery bit there which is a bit distracting that might be too dark in which case i'll have to pop it back on but we'll see i'll get started and then i can always put the overhead light back on and we might just have to deal with the glare and i think that looks like it might be a little bit better all right so i've got shimmery white card again let me tilt it i don't know if the shimmer is picking up or not so it looks a bit like normal whisper white but if you tilt it it's got a shimmer and it's also got a coating on it which means that the water doesn't affect it in the same way as it would with whisper white um, you definitely don't want to be doing these techniques with standard white card because the surface isn't designed to take the water um, it's the card starts to delaminate the layers start to peel apart and um, it bobbles and pills and you won't be at all happy with it so definitely you don't want to use ordinary card. Rosie's saying she hasn't got these stamps either. Well, there we go, Rosie. I might be tempting you twice over. Good thing Christmas is coming. Right, so I'm just going to start stamping. Actually, I haven't shown you the images I'm going to use. I'm going to use the deer. I'm going to use the trees, the grass, and the bushes here. 
Uh, I struggle not to use the rabbit, but I decided that I would I would not use the rabbit because I used him last time. All right. So I've got my deer here. I've got some cinnamon cider ink. And I'm going to start with the deer because this is the largest of the images. So and it's my focal point. So I want to place that first and then I can work everything else around it. I think I'll put him over here. There we go. And then I'm going to think about where my horizon is by bringing in the tree stamps. Now these have some sort of sketchy lines on them which indicate to you where the ground is. So I'm going to take this line I need something to point with. Can't find anything to point with. Oh, here we go. Let's use my take the pick the talk tool. This line here. I'm taking to be my horizon line so kind of mentally that's where where the horizon is I've got another tree here so I'm just going to stamp that approximately to line up it's come a little bit further forward that's fine and I'm going to stamp this kind of off the edge as well like that I'm going to bring in some little bushes these actually are brilliant branches as well if you stamp you obviously don't want the ground, but if you stamp them kind of off the edge, they, they look really nice as little branches too. I think we'll just we'll pop those about there. And then this is the most useful stamp in the whole set, which is the grass. But it really seems to um, it seems to work whether you stamp it kind of close to or far in the distance. And I'll show you what I mean. Rosie's saying these are so detailed. Yeah, they're incredibly detailed images, Rosie. So I'm just kind of filling in some gaps now. So do you see what I mean? I've stamped it in the foreground here. I have stamped it further away there and it looks fine. It just looks like taller grasses. So it is really useful. What else? A bit more here, I think. There we are. All right. So that will do for my stamping. And now what I'm going to do is once again make that ink I stamped run. So I'm bringing in my water painters and I'm just going to paint inside the lines this time, just painting with water. And I think you can probably see straight away that some of that ink is running and I can kind of push and steer the ink so that it is going to colour in the legs and body and so on of the deer. So it's just quite subtle colouring. And it's doing exactly the same as when we spritzed those tulips just now, except it's much more controlled. So that's the deer. So if I lift that up, I'm hoping that you can see and you can certainly see the difference uh, if you look at the deer and then you look at the other images on there. You can see that um, that colour has spread. Now, if I want any more colour, I can just squeeze my ink pad again and take a little bit from here. And then just add a bit more if I feel that I just want a little bit darker. But you may well find that the ink that's just spreading out from your line image is enough. So then I'm just going to very quickly go over the rest of the stamping, but I'm going to use the finer brush. So I'm just going to clean this one by squeezing out some water and washing it clean. And then I'm just kind of doing a bit of a scribble over those lines. So you can see this isn't very technical. If I slow down what I'm doing, I'm just drawing over them. Where it's really fine lines here I'm just kind of doing an up and down scribble just to colour, uh, not colour, cover all of the stamp lines with the tip of my brush. Oh Sandy's here, hi Sandy. Sandy's saying that she's loving it too. Good, thank you Sandy.
so it is quite quick although these are very detailed images you haven't had to draw them from scratch they're just stamped and we know how quick stamping is and then just brushing over them with a water painter just adds a little bit of dimension and interest Rosie's saying hi Sandy how are things in Lincolnshire Sandy Sandy's saying hi Rosie I do love the fact that something like a Facebook Live can allow us to all meet together, even though we're a long way away. There we go, and I think I've gone over everything there. Now I just want a little bit more colour in my sky, I think, so I'm going to actually take some more ink from the inside of the ink pad lid and just wash over the sky. Um, I'm going to use that lovely broad brush, which, again, if you were here last week, I know you've seen this, but I'll just show you. That's this one, which is designed exactly for doing what I'm about to use it for, which is colouring a large area. So I'm just going to squeeze out a little bit of water and just wet my card first. And then I'm just going to brush some ink over it. And the fact that the card is wet will just mean that the ink spreads that little bit more evenly. I don't have to go too fussily around my stamped images really because I've already um, made the ink run a little bit on those. So now I'm using the ink that's in the lid of my ink pad. I want it fairly pale so I'm just going to try that on a little scrap of paper here. That looks about right. And then I'm just going to brush it over. And I find it easier to turn my work sideways so I can pull the brush down towards me. And then if I put that back up, then I've got a deer in the snow. At least that's how, that's how I'm imagining it. Um, but there's a little bit of colour in the sky and that just helps give you this horizon line. Um, it is a little bit curled. That will flatten out as it dries. But if it's bothering you, you can actually wet the back and it will then lay flat as you work. So you can do this first. You can see how that flattens out. You can almost see it happening. And then that will lie nice and flat as you work. So Sandy's saying we had lots of snow this morning, so she went out for a walk. It was amazing. My goodness, Sandy, how much snow have you got? And so Sandy says, wow, it's fabulous. Well, thank you very much. So easy, so very easy. So that one I'm going to set aside to dry and I'm going to bring back one I did earlier. Which is here. This is a little bit curled after drying, but it'll, it'll glue down nice and flat. Before I do, I am just going to add a little bit of sparkle to this because it is a snow scene. So I've got my Wink of Stella here. I'm sure you've all got a Wink of Stella, but just in case you haven't, it's a really, really super shimmery ink. In a bit like a water painter, um, the ink is in the barrel, it's got a brush tip on it and it's full of little mica particles and shaking it like that you can hear the ball bearing going round and that's just making sure that the mica is all mixed nice and evenly. So I'm just going to go over a few of the stamped lines with this just to add a bit of sparkle which hopefully I will be able to show you. So I don't have any great plan for this. I'm just gently brushing over some of the lines where the frost would hit. So I'm not going to brush it on my deer. I'm just concentrating on the ground and the vegetation. And I'm not going to put any on my trees, I don't think. So just, just what's at ground level. Sandy says there was at least a couple of inches, but it's melted now. Oh gosh, well, perhaps you'll get some more. I know it's going to be really cold tonight. So if I just tilt that, I'm hoping you can see the sparkle on it. I don't know if you 
can or not. And I think I'm going to have to put that overhead light on again because it's very shadowy again. So bear with me. There we are. Hopefully, let me let me try that again because as far as I could see, you couldn't see the shimmer, but maybe you'll be able to now. Anyway, it just catches the light and just adds that little bit extra. And then the final touch, I've just stamped, thank you, just on a scrap of watercolour paper. Um, and then I've just brushed over the top again with some of the ink from inside my ink pad and let that dry just to give me a little sentiment piece to put on. So come back to my, oops, my card base. Mary's saying we, yeah, she, that Sandy's lucky we rarely get any snow. Sandy is in Lincolnshire, Mary. Oh, Sandy's saying it started to snow again, my goodness. Well, I know snow can cause a lot of disruption, but at the moment where we can't really go anywhere and do anything exciting anyway, I should think it's a lovely thing to have. So I'm trying not to press down on those bits of Wink of Stella. It does dry very quickly, but it's not quite dry. So once again, once it's framed on that card, it's just a monochromatic um, stamped card. But, but the card base and that little frame around it, I just think really does make it look pretty. Mel's here. Hi, Mel. Lovely to have you. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. So there we are. And what have I done with my little sentiment piece? Mm. Do you know, I'm not sure. I think I might just leave that off. I, I was thinking it would go sort of there, but I don't think I like that. So that's staying off as well. Right, Rosie, I'm going to put that with the rhinestones, all right? <laughs> Out of the way and not used. <laughs> and just a little something inside. I think I might stamp some trees inside because I really do love this tree stamp. Some trees inside and I'll pop some on the envelope as well. And again, I'm going to leave that blank because a blank card is always useful to have. So I'm going to do a little bit of clearing up, clean my stamps again, and then I have one final card for you with a final idea. Well, actually, a couple of ideas in one, really, um, for using your ink pads to colour your images. Rosie's saying, well done. Thank you, Rosie. <laughs> I think that's probably for um, being restrained with the embellishments. Is that right? <laughs> I just throw this lot in a bucket as well. Clear it up later. Right, let's move those out of the way. something that's a bit of a contrast to what we've done before. I wanted to try to give you different styles and different ideas because I don't know what's in your craft rooms. Um, I'm sure you've all got lots and lots of stamps but um, at least if I use three different sets there's a sporting chance that you might have some the same. So Ruth has joined us. Ruth, hi. You forgot to press the tab to load your message and get to the start. You've seen most of it. I'm so pleased you've seen most of it, Ruth. I'm glad you like the cards. Thank you. And you can always go back. Once I finish, the video will be sitting here in the same place um, and you'll be able to just press play on it and watch the bits that you missed. So it's never a problem if you get here later, if you can't watch it at all. Um, I also always upload these to YouTube straight after the session. So if you go to my YouTube channel, which is also called Handmade at Home, um, then you will find I've got a whole playlist there with all my Facebook Live sessions. 
and if you go on my Facebook page as well, if you look where it says photos and videos, or it might just say photos, I think it depends which device you're looking on, all my live videos are there. So there are lots of ways that you can watch them afterwards, even if you don't manage to watch all or some of it live. So Rosie's saying that she's got this set, yippee. Okay, Rosie, let's see if I've come up with an idea that you haven't done yet. All right, so the images I'm going to use are the lighthouse and the small sailing boat and the gulls. Um, and I've also used the thanks as well, although we'll, we'll see. We'll see if I use that this time or not. And this time I'm going to use the Misty Moonlight card base. It seems like a good nautical colour. All right, so... This time I'm going to stamp and colour in my images and I don't want the outlines to run. So the first two cards, um, I've deliberately made the ink run, but this time I don't want it to. And so for that reason, I'm going to be using stays on ink. So this is um, not a water-based ink. It's solvent-based and it's permanent. So first of all, don't drop it on yourself. Don't lean on your inky stamps. Um, and, uh, and just be a little bit aware that uh, this will not wash out. It does have the most gorgeous smell. Oh, lovely almonds. However, do not smell solvent-based products. So um, yes, it smells lovely, but don't smell it. Um, it's quite a small size of ink pad and it's felt as well, which means it's very firm. So I tend to hold the ink pad and take it to the stamp rather than the other way around. And you need to use more pressure to actually get the ink onto your stamp. So I'm tapping this quite vigorously. And I'm going to start off, I'm going to stamp on watercolour paper, but I will stamp on some shimmery white as well. So I'm going to put my lighthouse in first because that's the biggest image. And I always hold the stamp down just a little bit longer on watercolour paper because of the texture. Um, as I say, this is, is a, a, a texture that, that doesn't really affect your stamping, but I just think it helps to have the stamp on there a little bit longer. And then I've got the small sailing boat. And I'm going to stamp that up here somewhere, like that. And then we'll put in the gulls. This is one of those really useful images. If you get a little spot or a mark somewhere, you can usually put a gull on there. So if, if it, your, your card is not appropriate for adding a butterfly, add a gull. There we are. And I also want just a little bit more island around my lighthouse, or rocks, I suppose I should say. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ink up the base here and with most of the lighthouse off the edge I'm just going to fill in and just add some rocks so I don't actually want any of the lighthouse itself to stamp I just want the rocky base and it just adds some texture really there we are and once I get some color on that it's going to look much more like a rocky island so I'm not going to colour the whole of this, but I will show you a couple of things I did. I'll bring in the one that I did earlier, which is dry, which has got a lot more colour on it. I actually had a smudge, so I did stamp some, some extra gulls there. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is to colour the background in. So a little bit like I did on the deer with the sky, I'm going to colour in the sky and the sea here. So I'm mentally going to think, where is the horizon? Because I want my sea to be a little bit darker. Um, and again, I find it easier to do it up this way because I can then draw straight lines down towards me. So I'm bringing in this wide wash brush and I've got my Misty Moonlight ink pad with some ink in the lid. So this is just as we've already done. Squeeze my brush, get some water in there. So that's got the colour going nicely. So that's all ready. And then I'm just going to brush plain water onto this and I'm going to start roughly where my horizon is going to be and do the sky first and then I'm going to do the sea afterwards and by doing them separately first of all I find it easier to kind of get the separation of colour where I want a darker section and a lighter section and also I will probably end up with a better 
line if I do that. So that's now wet, so I'm just now going to brush some ink across and because the paper is wet it will blend quite nicely across without giving me too much in the way of lines. I'm not using a ruler obviously, it doesn't have to be perfectly straight, the horizon. A lot of the time our eye sees what it expects to see rather than what's actually there so you can get away with more than you think you can. So there we go. Now I know there is, so I'm actually going to change to a thinner tip. There is some space here between the sails, so let's just paint some sky in there. There we go. I will straighten the horizon just a little bit there. And I'm hopeful that that's going to dry fairly quickly under my light. Rosie said the completed one's gorgeous. Thank you very much, Rosie. That's kind of you. So I'm just feeling, I'm just going to give that a minute and have some of my tea, which is nearly cold. Um, and just let that dry up a little bit before I do the sea. So I don't have too much blending on the horizon. So I'm just going to do exactly the same again. I'm just going to wet where the sea is going to go. And then I'm going to spread some colour onto it. And I'm going to make the blue a little bit more intense this time. see the colour wanting to move where the water is which is helpful. So I've got a little bit of a, a blend there going on so I'm just going to dab that. There we go. And it's not very straight here. I've got my horizon going downhill. There we go. Is it still going downhill? Mm, not sure. A little bit more here in the middle. So there we go. So I'm not going to be too picky about that otherwise we'll be here all afternoon. There we go. And then I did, oh, and I need some sea in there, of course, don't I? In between the rigging on the boat. There we are. I thought it looked a bit odd, and that's why. There we go. Now, ideally, you let your sea and your sky dry before you do the next part, which is colouring in the other parts of the image. Um, we know from watercolour that where, where the paper is wet, the colour will spread. So if you want defined lines on, the, say, your boat and on your lighthouse, then allow the sea and the sky to dry off properly before you go ahead and do anything else. I am actually going to come in while it's still a little bit wet and, and do a little bit more painting on there, just because time is a little bit tight. And I won't colour the whole image, but I'll just show you some ideas. So this is bumblebee ink because I'm sticking pretty much with the ink colours. So I'm just going to colour in the light. This is just such a beautiful golden yellow. There. And again, in between times, I'm just cleaning my brush every time. Squeeze some water through, rub it on some scrap paper, and then it's clean and ready to change colour. I did go away from the ink colours and bring in some basic grey, which I'm going to use for the base of the lighthouse. And on these bigger areas, I'm actually going to spread some water out before I add much colour. I forgot, which is why this water is grey and not clear. There we go. Now let's pick up the ink. It just helps the ink spread a little bit better there. And then I've got real red for the lighthouse. So again, I'll paint this with water just to help that ink spread. And there's so much shading done on this stamp already that you don't have to do anything terribly clever 
with your paint unless you you want to Mary will be able to because she's an expert with watercolor um, but if you're more of a just plonk some color on and see what happens person then that will work very nicely with this there so you can spend more time with this but I'm just getting some color on there really just to show you what it's like I do think it's nice when you add some color to this it does brighten everything up so much so Sandy's saying it's effective already even though I haven't finished thank you Sandy and Rosie's saying that's her brother-in-law's birthday card sorted we aim to please Rosie <laughs> okay um, so I can use some bumblebee or some cinnamon cider on there I can use um, a color on the hull of the boat I am just going to show you I've got my chalk marker here and this is really nice for the sail although the paper is white it does just brighten the white up a little bit if you add some chalk marker to it I don't know how well that will come out on the video but it just really whitens it up and I think that's all the kind of the cleverness to show you if I bring in this one that I finished so that's one that's fully colored and before I finish the card I promised I would show you a second but similar way with this so I'm going to put the lid on all my brushes so they don't dry out I'm going to bring in some shimmery white card this time I'm going to bring back um, some stamps and I'm going to find my stays on ink on this desk it's buried of course there we are and um, what shall I do let me I'll do the lighthouse um, if I can find the stamp there it is <laughs> Rosie's being rude about her brother-in-law <laughs> we all have our cross to bear Rosie so I'm, I'm just going to stamp the lighthouse here and not compose the whole piece but I am going to just show you the blender pens with your ink pads Again, I mentioned these when we were talking about watercolour pencils a while ago. So these are blender pens. They're double-ended markers and they have, I don't know what it is, some kind of fluid in here. Um, I know it's acid-free and xylene-free because it tells me that, but I can't tell you what it actually is. Um, it doesn't matter which tip you use, they're both the same. It's just handy to have a tip either end. And you can use them to turn your ink pads into felt pens. So what should we do? Let's use some, mm, no, let's use cinnamon cider. So again, you want to squeeze your ink pad so you've got some inside the lid or alternatively, just press your clear block on and that becomes your palette then. And then with your blender pen, just pick up some of the ink and use it to colour in. So if I colour in some of this rock, the fluid in the blender pen mixes with the ink that you've picked up and you can just colour in and the longer I keep colouring the less ink there is and the more fluid there is and the paler it gets so I'm just going out to the ends of the card just to show you really not because this is the effect I'm looking for here but you can see how much paler this is here compared with here and to clean the tip and to change colours you do exactly the same thing as you do with your water painters you just scribble it and when there's no more colour coming out, uh, you can change colour. These will stain depending on the colours you use with them, but um, you don't need to worry about that because it's not going to come off. If you're drawing on your paper, scrap paper and it's clean, then it will be clean on your project. <laughs> Rosie's been very rude about her brother-in-law now. So he's not a cross to bear, he's a whole cathedral. Okay, so I could squeeze that on there. Let's take some on a clear block just to show you me using something a little bit different so this is real red again and this time I'll just colour in some of the lighthouse so not a bad idea just to test this on your paper make sure it's not too intense for what you want and then off you go so you can use these obviously without the ink to blend out your watercolour pencils that's what we did the other week or you can use them with ink to colour and if you find 
a felt pen easier to manipulate than a brush then blender pens are definitely the way to go for you. They're probably easier for children to use as well and they come with three in a pack so a pack of these is going to last you a really long time. I hope your brother-in-law's not um, watching this with us Rosie. <laughs> Sandy's just saying he's an antiquated relic. <laughs> Yeah, he's probably not a crafter, because crafters are lovely people. There we are. So that's just a quick for instance and how to with the blender pens. Let me put all of that out of the way. And bring back my completed piece and let's finish off this card. So much as we did before. I'm just going to add this to my card base so you can see although you're taking some time on the colouring um, they're actually quick cards to put together and you could spend a, an afternoon dare I say a wet miserable afternoon creating some of the little panels the right size and then you can spend you know another half an hour just putting them together into cards again watercolour paper just takes a minute to grab when you stick it down. It's heavier paper and um, and it's much thicker and more absorbent once it, it gets going. Obviously the water does sit on the top but then it's um there we go. That's grabbed now. And I did do I did do a little thanks sign here which again I just on a scrap of paper and I just brushed some colour over it and then I went round the edge with something a little bit darker. And again, I might pop that up there actually. I quite like that up there. I'm going to glue it down before somebody tells me no. <laughs> there we go. Rosie's brother-in-law is accomplished, but he's obviously not a people person. I'm not going to read your, your comment in full, Rosie, just in case. <laughs> there we are. So that's that finished card. Now I just need to stamp something on the envelope. Sandy's saying it's beautiful. Thank you so much, Sandy. I'm glad you like it. Just bring in the envelope. stamp the boat and I'll pop probably pop the boat as well inside I think and maybe some of the gulls make sure I get them the right way so they're not falling out of the sky there we are so that's the inside and that's the front so we're out of time so what I will do before I say bye bye to you is I will just bring back all three cards so you can have a quick look and then I will photograph them and pop them here later on whether I'll find they all fit on I don't know let's see what we can do have to wait and see let my iPad catch up. Move them left just a little bit more. There we are. Hold that one down for you. So that's the three ways then, or three ways, there are more I'm sure, using um, ink with your stamps for your images. So this one stamped, spritz it with water. This one stamp and use a water painter to paint over the image. And this one, pick up ink from your ink pad and apply it with a water painter. And of course, you can use a blender brush, uh, a blender pen instead of a brush if you'd prefer. So Lorraine's saying lovely, thank you. Belinda says thank you. Um, Mary, lovely cards, thank you, thank you very much, ladies. That's lovely. Rosie likes the lighthouse best of all. That's so nice. Right, I'm just going to cover you up, turn you round, and say a proper goodbye to you. I can't believe. We've been here together for over an hour. Right, bear with me while I do this. 
Okay. Oops. And hopefully I won't be upside down or back to front. Oh, I don't think I actually covered you over, did I? Sorry about that. So um, <laughs> I'm going to go a bit further away because it's a little bit low. Let's see how that looks. I think that's better. So great, thank you so much for joining me. Now next week I'll be back here two o'clock on Friday um, and I am going to have a sneak peek for you from the new catalogue, um, which I mustn't call the spring catalogue. It's the January to, yeah, January to June catalogue. But anyway, a sneak peek. So I hope you'll be able to join me for that. And if not, come back and watch it on the replay. Um, oh, what's next week's topic? There we go, Lorraine. See, I'm a mind reader. So hopefully that's answered that for you. Um, you probably won't be crafting along with me next week because I will have new things to show you but I will be making an easel card um, so if you would like to make an easel card then you can have some card and some stamps by you it won't matter if they're not the same ones as me or you can just have some old scrap card and make yourself a template so you know how to make an easel card next time but the focus next time I thought I would give you some sneak peeks um, because uh, you might be all Christmased out by then so I will be here next week, um, two o'clock on Friday. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.